In this short video, we will have a look at the properties of the convolution in continuous time and we will uh, see what is the output signal of an LTI system when the input is an exponential and when the input is a cosine. In continuous time, just as in discrete time, we have the same properties of convolution. The commutative property, the associative property and the distributive property. As for discrete time signals, for continuous time signals, the response of a linear system to an exponential input, it might be a complex exponential or a real exponential, is an exponential output multiplied by a constant. And that constant might be either real or complex. This is a key property that can be derived as follows. Let us say that the input is then e to the power of s t, s can be complex or real. The output is then, by definition of convolution, the integral from minus infinity until infinity of the impulse response h of tau x of t minus tau d tau. And here we use the formula of the convolution between h and x as opposed to the convolution between x and h just because it's more convenient and they, are, they lead always to the same result. Then if, we, then if we replace x by x of t minus tau by e to the power of s t minus tau, we see that we can decompose e to the power of s t minus tau as e to the power of s t times e to the power of minus s uh, tau. And then the crucial thing is that we can, since e to the power of s t does not depend on tau, we can move it out of the integral and we get already the exponential that we're looking for. And this multiplies an integral which is nothing more than a number. Than, than a number. If s is real, then this number capital H of s is real. If s is complex, this capital H is complex. So this capital H is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of h of tau e to the power of minus tau s d tau. And we get this number a capital H s times e to the power of s d. Again, just as in discrete time, in continuous time, the response of an LTI system to a cosine or a sine is a cosine or a sine multiplied by a real constant and the phase is shifted by a given constant. The multiplicative factor uh, for the amplitude and the additive factor for the phase are nothing more than the magnitude in phase of the complex number h of j omega, where omega is the frequency of the input signal, either a cosine or a sine. And in the cosine and the sine at the input can have a phase. Now, the way to conclude this is very similar to the discrete time basic, uh, to the discrete time case, and basically follows from the fact that cosines and sines can be written as, as sums of complex exponentials, and therefore I'm not going to do it here. Now, here is an example where we want to compute the response of an LTI system to a cosine. We know from the previous slide. This will also be a cosine, but with a different amplitude and phase. The amplitude and phase are the absolute value uh, and the angle of the complex number capital H of j omega, where omega is here replaced by one. Be it's nothing more than the angular frequency of the input, and since the input is cosine of t, its angular frequency is one, omega is one. Now, if we compute this integral, uh, the, the, the step and the derivation is given here, we get this complex number square root of 2 over 2 e to the power of minus j pi over 4 and that means that the input signal gets multiplied by square root of 2 over 2 and gets a phase shift of minus pi over 4 so the output is square root of 2 over 2 cosine of t minus pi over 4. 